Okay, uh, today I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction to a person who is very, very interesting and very, very uh, elusive, um, but more interestingly is the work that he left behind. So today we're going to talk about Villard the On Court. Um, he was an uh, he was a 13th century artist from, from the northern France. He is best known not for himself by any means because we do not know anything really about him. What we do know is that he left behind a sketchbook. And so this sketchbook, it was more of an album or a portfolio. It dates to around 1225 to 1235. Uh, it was discovered in the mid 19th century and it is now presented in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris. It consists of 33 parchment sheets and if any of you are familiar with any cooking, you will know that parchment sheets are actually those really thin uh, brownish papers. Um, so these papers, these 33 parchment sheets, they measure to be uh, 235 to 150 millimeters or so so quite a normal size now what is on these sheets then now this is where it gets interesting so let's just talk a little bit before I move on to talk about the manuscripts that uh, Villard on court he was he seems he must have been a very enigmatic and power minded medieval person considered by some people as a kind of uh, forefather of the great Leonardo da Vinci and when we look at some of the drawings you will understand why um, uh, in 1859 for example Mary Me compared Villard to Leonardo for just for his variety of interests and quite clearly showing a skill in many different sectors um, very little is known about him he pictured himself as a soldier and a master builder. Actually, he is known only through this portfolio of these 33 leaves. Um, we don't know many leaves are missing from this batch, so most likely it's not complete and the original content can't be determined. Uh, so it's all a little bit of a mystery. Uh, it contains approximately 250 drawings and they are quite famous because they are all very peculiar. Um, we are not even sure exactly what his name was uh, because in the manuscript there are given two names. So there's Villar de Honcourt and Villar de Honcourt. So some historians suppose that he was born in the village of Honcourt, which is in the north, uh, close to Picardy in northern France, uh, not only due to the resemblance of names, but also because the language which he used in his manuscripts are basically the Picard dialect of Old French. Uh, so then let's take a little bit of a look of some of the pictures that we found in this manuscript. Uh, so, as I said before, it contains 250 drawings and they are just a variety of subjects. They include architectural designs, plans, elevations. We can see some here, some early signs of engineering. Uh, we have a great variety of animal subjects, for example, and human. I'm going to show you some examples later on. Um, there are some ecclesiastical objects, mechanical devices. There is even the emotion machine. So once again, early signs of engineering construction. Uh, there is also the signs of war engines and many other subjects. Many drawings are uh, accompanied by, if you can see here, like a little bit of a note or a little bit of a description. Of course, these are in old French, medieval French. So even for me, who studied French, I would not even attempt to try and understand. But there is also something very peculiar in his drawings. They are charmingly ugly. For example, this lion is not exactly a graceful beast but at the same time very lovable and very unique uh, and that is exactly why he is so famous uh, the, the original purpose of this album is subject of a lot of controversy 
Uh, at first it was thought to be some kind of training manual for practicing architects, but then if we go back a little bit, where does this lion fit in to the architectural studies? We are not really sure. So it is rejected by many more modern researchers uh, because his drawings, they seem a little bit out of place to suit such a pur purpose. Uh, it has been argued that the drawings were deliberately simplistic and abstracted to serve a coded device of some meaning. Uh, nevertheless, most scholars today believe it's more likely served as a pattern or a model for a book containing designs for manuscripts, uh, illumination or metal work. Um, Villard's fame really is due to his uniqueness of his drawings. There are some unidentified mon uh, monuments in this drawing, according to them, uh, that was drawn in the 13th century. So probably Villard lived some time at the end of the 12th century and began drawing more in the 13th century, or we don't know exactly how his lifespan um, spanned. He claimed to have had many lands, and it's clear from his drawing and inscription that he visited some different French towns, as well as Switzerland and uh, Hungary. Uh, the subjects, let's take a look. Excuse me. The subjects, for example, if we take a little bit, if we go back again, just to repeat, um, they there are so many different categories, and they are so beautifully made. For example, we'll take a look here. It's easy to think that this would have been for an architectural student. This looks like the architectural drawings of a cathedral or a church. But then we have these two men uh, somewhat wrestling. I am not entirely sure what they are, uh, <laughs> what they are doing. And judging by their clothes, there is almost like a sensation of going back to antiquity. Of course, he is. Uh, this, it also, he's drawing in a very kind of poignant anatomical way. We can see here that he is already playing with the different proportions. Uh, it's not, of course, exactly the same, but it does draw your mind towards Leonardo da Vinci's anatomical drawings. And we have this, what looks like he could be a Greek scholar. So this is actually one of the parchments, one of the pages. So there really seems to be kind of no rhyme or reason in the way that he is presenting uh, his drawings. So it does spark your imagination that perhaps this was just something that he did uh, perhaps for personal interest and personal gain rather than having a significant purpose. Uh, here we have uh, a soldier dressed in very traditional medieval uh, clothes. Um, the, ha the figure of the hand, we are not entirely sure what that means, but he's also much smaller, the paper would have been much bigger. But here, once again, going back to this Greek scholar, I think it's beautifully the curving of the eyebrow. He looks very stern. He has purposely done every single curl as if he was standing in front of a classical sculpture, almost uh, depicting it straight off. And then, of course, we have this reindeer or uh, forest creature passing through, just sort of unassuming. It's the same as if we are looking at these here. We can see this wheel that would be would have been turning. It looks like the wheel that we use, for example, to extract water energy. So early science of engineering, as I mentioned before. But here we have something similar, except for we are looking at anatomy. So something that is moving in a kind of circle, perhaps powered by some other forces other than nature. And then here we have another study of the proportions and the anatomy of the face. And all the way here at the bottom, it looks like we got a fox or another woodland creature, quite similar to what's going on here. So it is just an incredibly beautiful and charming and eclectic mix of everything. So this sketchbook dating back to 1325, or we hope or we think 1325, uh, with this 
almost anonymous author and artist is really one of the most beautiful sort of medieval historical evidences that we have left today and that's it if you are interested i highly suggest that you google uh villiard the honest horse because there are 